<clears throat> what I didn't tell you so far is that it was Henry Kissinger in 1968 when he became National Security Advisor under Richard Nixon that the option to develop these types of viruses was selected. Selected, apparently, by Kissinger. You see, when Kissinger took over under Nixon as National Security Advisor, the most powerful man in American intelligence, he immediately ordered Melvin Laird to do a reassessment of America's biological weapons capabilities. He was looking for alternatives to nuclear weapons. How did Kissinger become the nuclear weapons guru of the world? Well, Nelson Rockefeller made Henry Kissinger the Council of Foreign Relations Nuclear Weapons Study Group Director in 1955. As a result, he became the guru, and as a result, we now have nuclear weapons deployed around the face of the planet. In fact, it was Henry Kissinger. I remember I was born in 52, and I remember as a youngster in grade school running downstairs in our schools with nuclear weapons drills. And I was afraid. I don't know about you, those of you who remember doing that. I was afraid. It sent chills down my spine. At that point, I didn't even know what we were doing. But uh, it was Henry Kissinger's statement, quote, that a fallout shelter in every home in America is that a price that Americans should be willing to pay for their freedom, end quote. So that Kissinger now is looking for alternatives to nuclear weapons because, you know, nuclear weapons are kind of messy. They destroy the infrastructure. You know, they destroy the buildings and things, and, you know, they blow up everything, and it's expensive to rebuild the stuff that's valuable. And biological weapons are so much cleaner and so much more, less expensive. And you can literally kill off the same numbers of people, if not more. So the order was given to develop these, and of course then you had, as a result of that, the 1969 communication between the Department of Defense and National Academy of Sciences, National Research Council, around the same time that Duisburg was serving with them, and around the same time that David Baltimore was one of their heads. So that, <clears throat> how also does Kissinger get involved in biotechnology, and where does this whole thing kind of fit in into the New World Order agenda? People have no clue that the New World Order agenda has been evolving for centuries, but the contemporary evolution of the New World Order is virtually identical to Henry Kissinger's 1950s, early 50s, Harvard PhD thesis called The Meaning of History, wherein he lays out the need for ongoing small wars around the planet on a continuing basis to maintain the economic alignment of the superpowers, of which the war against AIDS, the war against drugs, the war against crime, the war against illiteracy, the war against illegal immigration, all of these useless wars that taxpayers are spending countless fortunes to fund, only building huge dysfunctional bureaucracies and funding the coffers of the oligarchy, the shadow governors. So this is the Rockefeller-led, principally military, medical, industrial complex today. And medicine, you know, it's fabulous. It's now, at least in the United States, over 15% of the gross national product. It's as huge an industry as is military. So, you know, you reports more people are dying from uh, living off of cancer than dying from cancer, and it's true. And who started the cancer industry but the Rockefellers in the 1920s? So, Kissinger's role, where does he fit in, where does he really go back to in this whole mess, is Literally in around 1938-39, Kissinger leaves, leaves Nazi Germany, uh, three, literally three months before Kristallnacht. He leaves Nazi Germany. According to Walter Isaacson in the book Kissinger, Kissinger's greatest gripe, leaving at age 16, when my mother, age 16, is in Nazi Austria, scrubbing the streets at Nazi gunpoint. Kissinger leaves with his parents. His greatest gripe, according to Walter Isaacson, is that why can't he march in the streets like the other Nazi youth? And in fact, in the Bible, it talks about beware of those who call themselves Jews who are not. Henry Kissinger is a classic example of that, you see. This is a man who denied his Judaism. He has no spiritual reality. He has uh, dons a yarmulke, like 
President Clinton when it's politically convenient and then takes it off. And um, you see, his, he goes back to Nazi Germany in the infantry six years later, age 23, never fires a shot, immediately gets boosted up into American intelligence among the highest positions as the right-hand man, the chief translator for General Bowling, who's Joint Intelligence Commission director, the, quote, godfather to Project Paperclip. Kissinger becomes American intelligence's chief Nazi hunter. His assignment to seek out and find Nazis, not for war crime trials, as we all believed, but for service to American intelligence and American industry. This is all done under top secret project codenamed Paperclip. Project Paperclip, which was the exfiltration of approximately 2,000 Nazis out of Germany through the rat line, the secret railroad that went from Germany to Rome, wherein before the war's end, they got out almost all of the highest level Nazis and all the Nazi money, including the gold. In the newspapers recently, at least in the United States, USA Today had five days where they had a special thing that said not only where did the gold go, but the blood Red Cross, the Red Cross, knew that the Nazis were up to no good and they could have done more. Again, 80% truth. They don't tell you 10%, 20% of the most important facts. The Nazis, by the way, were given, many of these Nazis were given false identifications through the American Red Cross. They were given CIA identifications, like the false one of Klaus Barbie, who I show you in the book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola, reprinted in black and white. Joseph Mengele, another one that got out in this matter. And Eric Traub, T-R-A-U-B, and his assistant, Hitler's top biological weapons developer, that they took out and he went to work, they put him to work at the United States Naval Biological Research Laboratory. They paid them, these people, $65,000 a year starting in 1948 plus benefits. That was a lot of money back then and for a lot of people today that's still a lot of money. So this is Hitler's top biological weapons developer. And the American Red Cross, I told you that the, um, you see it was Lawrence Rockefeller that put together the New York City Blood Council. This was the council of doctors that put together the New York City Blood Bank. These became the international blood bankers, you see? These were the people that allowed 10,000 hemophiliacs throughout the United States and countless others throughout the world to get HIV contaminated blood, simply allegedly because they didn't want to spend $150 million to clean them up. Maybe they had a different agenda besides that, besides money. So the Nazis are getting out through the rat line. Unfortunately, Half of the Nazi war chest, remaining $300 million at the end of the war, was laundered through, or filtered through, that is, the Chase Bank Paris branch, which happened to remain open throughout the German occupation of Paris. That's Rockefeller's bank. And that the Dulles brothers, John Foster and Alan Dulles, we have out of Washington, D.C., an airport, Dulles Airport. It's a hero to America, right? It was the Dulles brothers who were John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil's chief legal counsel and chief business managers. It was the Dulles brothers that engineered the partnership, you see, between IG Farben, Germany's leading industrial group, and John D. Rockefeller, Standard Oil. It was, and by the way, the Third Reich. It was IG Farben that was Hitler's principal military armaments company. These were the people that used the concentration camp victims as slave labor to build and run their factories. These were the people that held the patent on the gas that killed those millions of people. This is Rockefeller's partner. Many Americans are holding, and maybe Canadians too, Chase Bank, Manhattan Bank cards. Buying gas from Esso, Exxon, might want to think twice. We are funding this. So, literally, it is a tribute to counterintelligence propaganda that we don't have the American Jewish community, the African American community, and the nation of